Each person has his or her own place. A peasant is meant to work on a farm. A feudal lord is meant to enjoy life in his or her estate. And she, a princess, was meant to be in a palace. She thought so to this day. The girl was held. She asked to be released because she had something to tell His Majesty. She wanted everyone to know the intruder's pores, conspiring with her mother. She impersonated the princess for more than ten years, tarnishing the name of Belathroth. Despite the fact that thanks to the kindness of the sincere Princess Alencia, her life was saved, but she did not stop envying and spiteful to her, and also intended to sow enmity between the Tower of Mages and the Empire, which would cause a national crisis. So everyone wanted to sentence her to death, calling her a fake princess. She was trying so hard to be loved, and why she made a fuss, so that people would not take away what was hers. The girl told His Majesty that she did not impersonate the princess. She thought all this time that she was his daughter, and did not deserve to die for her other actions. So she asked for mercy. The man did not want to listen to her, and ordered to sew her mouth shut. And what did she expect anyway? Neither love nor a place. None of this belonged to her. She asked her husband if he had ever thought of her as his daughter, if he even considered her his daughter a little bit. The princess asked her father to leave, to which he agreed, and replied that he had nothing more to see, and ordered to proceed with the sentence. A rare thief, Philomel, her only innocence was tarnished by countless crimes, and in the end, she was buried, without the possibility of ever seeing the light of day again, because she was not worthy to die in peace. The girl died painfully from the executioner's blade, but there was not a drop of sympathy from people. The end of this fake princess is truly not fit for a thief. Whatever mistake Philomel made, it is not a reason to kill her. The girl only read a suspicious book she found in the garden, not knowing what it contained, which said that she was a fake and the daughter of another person. She wondered what would happen if the nanny saw the book. The book was called Princess Alencia. Her mother has beautiful golden hair and green eyes. Her father has black hair and blue eyes. The story of a real princess who is like two peas in a pod, like the empress and the thief Philomel. People began to talk among themselves, saying that the emperor wanted to pass the throne not to the princess, but to his relative on the sideline. And it turns out that she does not even have any resemblance to the Empress. How His Majesty loved the Empress, and now he doesn't even look at his daughter. He was resentful of his daughter because she killed her mother when she was born. She wanted to see him, but the man always ordered him to take her away. The girl looked in the mirror and wondered if they didn't look alike, but they only had the same name. First of all, she was made a rare thief. The image of Philomel from the novel. She thought that someone else had seen her quarrel and decided to write about it. Meanwhile, the nanny came to the girl's house. The heroine hid the book. The woman started yelling at her that she was not studying and would go about her business again when she was older. She said they would be in a difficult situation if she kept causing trouble. His Majesty said that this time, no matter what happened, he would eradicate her habits, and if so, she would have a chance to eat with His Majesty. But the girl did not believe it, and was told that it was a very bad habit to doubt people. The girl said that she thought so, because he never kept his promises. She worked hard in class, and passed the exam well, and her father not only did not praise her, he did not even come to see her. The heroine asked the nanny if she was not at all like her mother. The woman replied that strangely enough, Isabella had a great memory, and was mature beyond her years. She was a good person. So if she wanted to follow her mother's example, she should behave decently at the festival. The festival in honor of the founding of the state, according to legend, once the empire received the blessing of the deity of the sun. In honor of this, the Belarov Festival is held annually. The celebration plays such an important role that the date of its holding is chosen with the help of an oracle. According to custom, the holiday begins with a memorable speech in the palace where the imperial family and the aristocracy gather. However, the holiday must be held under a clear sky, where the sun's rays fall on the ground. It was raining outside, and the servants suggested that His Majesty postpone the holiday 
although the scientists and magicians unanimously replied that it would not rain today. So the emperor told them to set a new date and inform him. The girl realized that the same thing had happened as in the book. In the novel, Alencia was going to attend a holiday, but all her plans fell through because of the unexpected start of rain. After that, Philomel thought that such events as the failure of the high priest, for example, were only absurd tales, but that what was described in the novel would happen in reality. What if the events from the book are not accidentally unfolding in reality? What if this whole story was real? She looked at her father and hoped that he would not postpone the holiday and asked out loud that they should do as they said in the memorial speech, so she asked to hold the holiday on the set date. The man did not want to listen to her. He did not understand why he had to listen to the whims of this girl day after day. He thought that she had blocked the emperor's path just because she wanted to see the festival. The nanny who beat the girl decided that she could not let her get away with what happened. So from that moment on, she was transferred to a special education system. She was brought medicine and asked why she did it, and she only needed to admit her guilt. Then she and the other girls would have gotten less. The girls asked her not to be too upset. The nanny is a moody person, so she will quickly cool down. She had heard that the festival would be held in a week, and they didn't think the nanny would let the girls see it. She wondered if this week was too long and was told that it was rumored that the high priest had fainted in his cart on his way back, and that this had never happened before, and that the empire was no longer blessed by God. As night fell, the girl wondered what the likelihood was that the postponement of the festival was just a coincidence, and that the book had just accurately predicted the events. No, it was not a novel. It was a prophecy. She thought that she was not the daughter of her father, Emperor Justus. She was a fake. The nanny came to wake the girl up. She was called by the emperor about yesterday, but she was not feeling well and said she could not even get up. The woman thought she was faking it and said she could not let today's situation go and how many times she faked it to avoid going to class. But she really had a fever. All she wanted was to be loved, to be looked at, just once, at least once. She woke up and realized that she had been sleeping. She wondered how long she had been sleeping. Anyway, she had a fever, so she needed to take her medicine and go to bed. The soup was also ready. The nanny asked her why she was acting childishly in opposing the cancellation of the festival, and she told His Majesty that she would not be able to attend because she was ill. But she knew that the emperor was not the kind of person who would take care of her when she was ill. The girl knew about it, but she was just scared because her father did not even say warm words to her. And if everything goes as in the book, then in the end, her father will kill her. And what if she starts to live honestly? What if she becomes the daughter her father wants? Even if she is a fake, won't he treat her more gently because she has lived as his daughter for nine years? Perhaps in the future, everything will change. She decided to go and ask now because she does not want to die in any way. She was going to her father's house and she was dizzy. She heard voices coming from the room where the maids sleep. They were discussing why they should suffer because of the princess, because she was causing them problems. Their salaries were cut. The girl listened to them and did not understand why they had such an attitude towards her. Even Knight Martin, why he was treating her like this. He had promised her that he would protect her and that she should not worry. The girls were so nice to her, and now they say they hate her, and they say she has no divine powers which are a symbol of the imperial family. Even if they are related, it turns out that she is only outwardly a royal person, and she threw a tantrum in front of the aristocrats. If this continues, then Duke Avridan may terminate the marriage agreement. Even when the princess fed him cake, he clearly did not like it. The girl decided she had enough and went to her father because her life was in her hands. Poland tried to persuade the man to visit the sick princess, but the man did not understand why he was so worried. Maybe she was faking it again, but according to the doctor, this time she was really sick. He was her only family member. 
why he was so cold towards his daughter. Does he really think that the reason for the death of Her Majesty Empress Isabella is the birth of a princess? The man told him to shut his mouth. He used to think so, but that's in the past. Now he feels nothing. He doesn't even hope that the girl will replace Isabella, and he would be happy if she performed at least minimal functions as an heir apparent. But she shows only very poor results, and even yesterday, she made a scandal. So what else can we expect? Poland said that Philomel was also trying. She was still nine, to which the emperor replied that if he called tantrum suffering, then he was right. At her age, he had fought with his blood brothers. She was nothing like him, and even more so Isabella. The boy wondered if he really did not feel any attachment to her highness, and was told that it was true, that now he expected only one thing from her, that she should live like a dead mouse, and that no one should pay attention to her, as if she did not exist at all. The girl did not understand what to do now. In the future his majesty would not forgive her. Even if she now began to behave sensibly, she wanted to ask for help, but there was no one who was on her side. The heroine began to cry a lot and did not want to live. When the tears in Philomel's eyes dried, she took out the prophecy and began to read it, thinking that maybe there was some kind of guide, a sure way to survive. In the novel, Philomel did not die immediately after being called a false princess, all thanks to the request of Alencia, who pardoned her. However, unable to overcome her envy and jealousy, she repaid her benefactions with evil and ended up in prison. But then she managed to avoid punishment, so she died when she was caught for the second time. She realized that she just needed to escape before Alancia appeared. Even if it was impossible now, she would be able to, as long as she had it. This is an object that has been passed down from generation to generation in the Belarov family. Its name is Ring of Recognition. Possessing the divine power of the sun god, members of the imperial family can use various magic and abilities, including the ability of teleportation, which allows them to go to the place where they were before. Lack of powers is a problem for Philomel, but she must get the ring with her father's divine powers in it. Although he will not give it to her now for sure, something must be done. But she is ill, and now is not the time for this. We need a more authentic way. It's not enough to live a decent life, so there can be even more people who hate it. And on that day, the young fake princess began to create her plan, which could cost her life. His majesty came to the girl. The nurse wanted to wake her up, but the man forbade her to do so. He didn't understand why he came here. If it wasn't for Poland, his leg wouldn't be there. But still, obviously she was really sick. The girl began to speak and cry in her sleep. She asked her father that she was a good girl, so she asked him not to kill her. Why does everyone want to kill her so badly? She doesn't want to die, no matter who it is. The man looked at her. He used to be like that, but it's a long-forgotten memory. What if these were not just childish whims? What if she was not living the happy life of the emperor's only daughter, but was desperately asking him to pay attention to her? He thought he must be mistaken. Philomel held an incredible shining fruit in her hands, handed over to her by his majesty. The nanny said yes, but it was too precious for a cold. She wondered if nothing had happened yesterday, because it was really the fruit of the world tree. The world tree is a sacred tree located in the heart of the continent. The fruits that ripen on it are a miraculous medicine that gives the body energy. She had heard that these fruits are delivered to the imperial palace every year. She never thought she would get something like this, although, perhaps, it was Poland who sent him on behalf of the emperor. The girl conveyed her gratitude to the emperor for his great generosity and asked him to remove the fruit with the medicine. The nanny said that the gentleman asked for a visit. He said he would visit her when she was better and asked when she should invite him. The girl thought about it and said that if it was possible, it would be this afternoon. The girl came into the room with his lordship and Nazar. The boy said that he could not help but worry about her when he heard the news of her illness. The man said that he had an important meeting, so he had to leave them and asked Nazar to take care of the girl. His eyes were reading 
Will he really cope? Nazar Avradim, an adult beyond his years, good-natured, her future fiancé. The boy asked if she was okay. Maybe she was too overworked. She said she was fine and asked when her illness was over. If he would mind going on a picnic with her, he didn't mind and said he didn't care where he went as long as he was with her. After talking, they decided that the weather was not suitable for a picnic and that it would be nice to create an atmosphere of a real picnic indoors. Preparing snacks, he agreed. And the girl realized that Nazar did not want to do anything with her. She asked if she had heard that there was a pianist who had become the talk of the town, and she thought it would be nice to call him and listen to him play. Answers that lacked personal opinion and conversations that consisted of indifferent responses. In the novel, Nazar offered leisure options without further ado, but not to her, but to Alencia. He never felt etc. that she did. The guy said that he would contact the pianist when she got better. The girl interrupted him and said no, and added that he should pretend that this conversation had not happened, thanked him for visiting her, and said that from now on, there was no need for him to come here so often. She also said that she did not want to waste such precious time, so that from now on, he would spend it with other friends as he pleased. He apologized if he had hurt her feelings, her majesty, if she was angry. But she said that she thought they didn't have time to see their friends because they met too often and that they shouldn't make other friends. The girl decided to follow Nazar's example, to be friendly with everyone, but not to give your heart to anyone. But she realized that she would not be able to smile as naturally as Nazar. She was sitting in class after reading a book. She asked the teacher which one she should read next. The woman decided that the girl was not even reading, but the girl said that she would be asked a question if she had any doubts. The teacher was incredibly impressed. She answered all the questions correctly. The princess has changed. Such news began to spread slowly through the imperial palace. As soon as she woke up from her bed, she immediately had a desire to study. It is said that the princess even asks questions if she did not understand the topic. These changes also affected the time she spent with Nazar. The maid stumbled and broke a cup that Duke Averdon had given the princess, and she thought she was dead. But the girl only told her to clean it up quickly so that the carpet wouldn't get wet and to be careful not to get hurt. The maids discussed this situation. They believed that she was so affected by His Majesty's quarrel over the festival and thought that she would soon return to her former state. The next day, rumors spread that the girl had passed the exam. A day later, she fell down and did not show a drop of irritation. A few days later, the cook said that Her Majesty had stopped being picky about the food. She ate everything. Has she really grown up? The nanny was happy because she believed that her upbringing had given results. It was a pity that she would have to quit her job because of her back, but they did not even realize how much work it cost her. A maid was looking for the girl to tell her that His Majesty had told her to bring the girl to share a meal. The girl did not understand why he had called her. It could not be that he simply wanted to enjoy the meal in her company. The man said that he heard that she was focused on her studies, all the teachers never stopped praising her. The girl thanked him and said that it was all thanks to the wonderful teachers that His Majesty had assigned to her. His Majesty, during the time they had not seen each other, she began to speak in such an adult way, and now he must behave as befits an imperial person. He asked her how she was feeling, and she said that after taking the medicine he sent her, she was much better. He said that he was glad to hear that, and added that her mother was also in poor health, and said that if she wanted to receive something as a reward, she only had to say so. What she had been waiting for happened much faster than she expected. She decided that it was too early to ask for anything, and said that it was enough that he appreciated her efforts. After he answered, she realized that it was time, and began to say that she actually had one request. Poland came to the nanny to tell her His Majesty's words to leave her duties. She had done a good job taking care of the Empress and Princess to this day. She would be provided with generous compensation, so she would definitely not be disappointed. The Princess heard this conversation and thanked her for the time they had spent together. And now she would finally have a rest after years of such tiring work. 
The woman was shocked by this news because she was not going to resign. Poland asked her if she was suffering from back pain. Her Majesty personally informed the Emperor about it. Therefore, from today on, she needs to put aside her work and take care of herself, and they will find a good maid for Her Majesty. The only thing left to do is to expel the others from here. They will only be an obstacle to her. But still, she managed to change at least something. Little by little, she feels that things are not the same as before. It's a great start. A few days later, that's right, the maid who took care of Valencia is Countess Delas, and with her her plans will definitely come true. Poland tried to persuade the woman because they could not find a person who could do the job better than her. The woman thought about it. A capricious and sensitive child. There are not the best rumors about her. Is it worth taking on this job? It is necessary to make a worthy first impression on the princess. The woman was having tea with the girl and she was amazed that it was nothing more than the usual rumors of aristocrats and why they spread such stories. The princess asked if the woman knew anything about fashion, and if she could look at her dresses. She had a lot of beautiful clothes. They went to look through her wardrobe. The woman thought that the princess would be too mature for her age, but her childhood had not quite left her. The countess looked at her wardrobe. The dresses were good, but there was chaos. They were crumpled and not distributed by season. Where is it seen that maids of noble birth made such a gross mistake? The woman saw this picture and decided that she needed a crowd of new maids. After a while, the entire staff of the princess's maids was replaced. The reason for this was the results of an investigation conducted at the request of the countess, during which not only negligence but also theft from the budget was revealed. All those involved were severely punished, and the nanny was no exception. She stole the most money, got off with only seizure of property, but they said she came to the palace and caused a stir. Eventually she was beaten and expelled. A success as she expected, Countess Delis is a very intelligent, orderly, self-respecting woman who has been a strong support for Elenincia. If the events had not unfolded as written in the book, she would not be standing next to her now. Thanks to her, the princess managed to see off the nanny and other maids, but it was not yet time to relax. Another day passed. She hoped that from now on, everything would go smoothly. The woman brought the girl some mountain herbs and asked why she needed them. The princess told her that His Majesty was a drinker, and she had read that herbs helped to cope with a hangover. When she opened the herbs, she smelled a terrible odor. No matter how great a hangover remedy they were, the herbs would be hard to drink for free, but she had everything she needed. Bitter mountain herbs and the juice of the world tree fruit. If you mix both ingredients, you will get a wonderful life-giving medicinal tea. This is the case when mixing good ingredients has a beneficial effect on the body. According to the book, it was Alencia who was the discoverer of the drink. In any case, she already eats well. Everything is great in life, so she must give in. But she believed that a real princess would have done differently. And yet Alencia has a good heart that she was ready to give this tea to some knight. But the heroine is not like that. The best is for influential people. Everything is ready. All that remains is to take it to His Majesty. Countess Delans woke up the emperor, but he was hung over and had a headache, so he asked her to be quiet, but the woman only said that he had a visitor. The girl came with tea and asked how he was feeling. He wondered what the girl was doing there. She said she had brought tea with mountain herbs to make him feel better. Mrs. Delas said that the girl made this tea herself and that the fact that she cares for her father is not worthy of praise. Philomel said that the smell of the drink is not very good, but the taste is. The tray was heavy, and the girl could barely hold it. The man helped her by taking the tray away. Then he started to taste the tea. It tasted not so bad. She said that she made it with herbs and world tree juice. The man said that he wanted her to use him, but the girl said that she had completely recovered from the disease and he often suffered from hangovers. She realized that he often consumes alcohol in large quantities. And since it had been a decade since he started abusing alcohol, it was around the time when Empress Isabella died and the girl was born. He learned about the death of his beloved, and the daughter turned out to be a fake. 
My father turned to Her Majesty and said that thanks to her, his mind had become clearer, and if she wanted something, let her speak. But Philomel knew that he would reward her this time, because it was the Emperor's way, she thought. The girl chose to walk with the Emperor and decided to prove to him that she was a worthy heir. While she was thinking about when her father would come, a boy approached her and began to say that only members of the imperial family were allowed to be in this place. He did not know her. His mother, the Marquise Sylvia Elos, formerly Sylvia Bilarov, approached them. She was Justus's half-sister and the only remaining representative of the imperial family in the empire. The reason why the former princess remained in the palace was that she quickly took the side of the current emperor. She had two sons, and the eldest, Logan Elos, was prophesied to be the next emperor. And since the second son, Liam, was still too young, Philomel did not have the opportunity to meet him officially. The younger son turned to his mother because she said that the princess was not beautiful. The girl understood how she was being talked about. She had heard that he would be an emperor, but if they quarrel now, and then it is revealed that she is a fake princess, she will be in trouble. They started to leave, but Philomel stopped them. They must greet her in the proper way. Did Mrs. Alos, when she was a princess herself, her distant relatives greeted her in the same way. The woman greeted her, but it was not enough for the girl. She made her kneel down. Philomel realized that the woman was hurt by this. She had once been a princess herself, and since there was no empress, the social circles belonged to her. She could ignore it, but she did not want such a life. However, at that time the emperor came, who could not understand why they made such a fuss. The girl said that Liam said that his brother would become the next emperor. Could he really eliminate her and become emperor? Elos's family began to make excuses that this did not happen, that she most likely misheard or misunderstood. The woman began to say that Philomel was lying because she was not severely punished. The girl wondered if the emperor would believe her since she had no proof and she was afraid that he would be disappointed in her. The girl began to cry. However, the man said that she was not the one who could lie, and if so, he was no better, because he himself had heard everything. The man realized that he had not paid much attention to it, to think that they managed to build a conversation right in front of him. The emperor told Sylvia that the reason he left her was because she was not worthy of getting her hands dirty, and if she heard him, she should take her children away from here before he took their heads off their shoulders, because today he also did not want to shed blood. Thus, the three men disappeared from the garden forever. Their names were erased from the imperial family, and they were banished, putting a seal on the sacred powers of each. Unable to come to terms with their pride, as members of the imperial family, they became outcasts from society. But Philomel would learn about this later. She was afraid that if he was so harsh with his relatives, what would happen when the truth came out? His majesty did not look as if he was having a hard time. They started walking. The girl asked him if he liked it and if they could walk more often. And without hesitation, the man agreed. Starting from the day his majesty took too much alcohol, she brought him tea in bed every morning. Thanks to the help of Count Paulin, who wanted to eradicate his majesty's drinking habit, she managed to get the information without any effort. Although he was always burning the count with his eyes, he finished his tea. She suggested that he take a walk. He realized that she was choosing dates when he was free and agreed. She realized that by talking to him like this from time to time, the emperor would begin to pay attention to her strengths. Talking about her achievements, the girl stumbled and fell, but she understood that she should not cry. She said that everything was fine, and tomorrow they would be able to continue the walk. The man took her in his arms. She was uncomfortable with it. She asked to put her on the ground because it was hard for him. But the man said he looked like a dying man and continued to carry her. The girl fell asleep in his arms. Countess Delis said that the girl woke up very early every day so that her husband could enjoy tea in the morning. And she heard that the empress also liked to walk in the garden like that. She liked to admire the flowers, so her majesty was like her mother. The man says that she was looking more at the scenery, so she looks more like him than Isabella. 
Maybe it is true. Time has passed unnoticed. She is already 10 years old. Nazar worried to this day that the girl hates him. He got down on his knees and begged for forgiveness until her resentment subsided. This situation was very disturbing to his soul. The girl did not know what to do with it. She still remembers that day, the day she first saw Nazar, and the moment their eyes met, she fell in love with him at first sight. Her beloved sank into her soul much more than the image she had built in her head based on rumors about him. From that day on, she was constantly waiting to meet him. She liked his kindness, which her parents could not give her. The fact that he looked at her as Philomel and not as a princess, so she was happy that this was the person her fiancé was. However, she did not think that this relationship and feelings were fake. She asked him to get up from his knees if he doesn't love her. As in the book, there is nothing you can do about it. She can't hate him for that. How many times had Herzog told Nazar off for behaving like that now? And she did not understand what he had done to his own son. She made him repeat after her the words, I am a valuable person. I am not someone's property. I will live the way I want to live. One day, Nazar will meet Alancia, and she will no longer be around. But she will be sincerely happy if he lives his life the way he wants to, because he was her first love. Perhaps because the atmosphere was less tense, but that evening with him was different from the others. She talked to him and realized that these were not the thoughts of a character from a book or something Duke Averdon would think of, but the dreams of a boy named Nazar. She realized that she had memorized the prophecy, so she decided to burn the book and as soon as she thought that the book had burned to ashes, she breathed a sigh of relief. But something incredible happened. She was reborn. Court magician Humphrey. She asked him if he was good at magic. He was not sure that he knew everything, but he was better in the imperial palace. There were things that really interested her. She asked if there were prophecies. He asked by prophecy, she meant a book that accurately predicts the future. Their presence is determined only by rumor. In real life, no one has seen these books. The existence of prophecy is theoretically and practically impossible. Predicting the future is one of the many rituals among the countless possibilities of mages. She asked what about priests, but the same applies to them, because even the predictions of the high priest deviate by 30% from reality. Then what is this book about? The girl asked about the Lord of the Tower of Mages, what kind of person he was. The man said that he was a perfect mage, and he suddenly had a stomach ache, so he left. She thought he ignored her, just pretended not to hear her, and ran away. She was eager to learn about Lord, and it was impossible to find information about him in real life. But she remembered that there was something about him in the book. She began to read The Great Magician, Le Ken. It turned out that he was her own father. It was written in a prophecy. After the first escape, her refuge was the Tower of Magicians. The owner of this place was her father. He helped her and did not leave her at that moment. However, the thief Philomel began to borrow his power to commit crimes, and La Queen stopped protecting his daughter. That is why Philomel met with the Angel of Death. That's all, because the story was written from the point of view of Alancia. In the book, it was said that her father really tried to protect her, maybe even a little bit, but he loves her. She couldn't understand why the book was in her hands, how she got to the garden, and whether she was on the right path. A lot of water has flowed since that day. Two years passed. The girl came to the emperor and was surprised that he had hardly touched alcohol lately. She asked what kind of documents he had. The man said that they were connected with the holiday in honor of the founding of the state. The date was coming up. So much time had passed, but it was still a painful topic for the girl. But she did not understand why the emperor looked so surprised. She told the emperor that the most important thing at the holiday was a memorable thing. Because you need to watch your tongue. It is one of the three most important anniversaries of the empire. And added that when she becomes empress, she also wants to say the same wonderful words as her age. No matter how much she thinks, she always comes to the conclusion that this is the perfect answer of an heir. Hearing these words, her husband suggested that she try to say a memorable speech, because there are no rules that state that only the emperor can speak. Their ancestor allowed the crown prince to do so. 
He said that it was nothing to worry about. She could just go out and say a few words. She agreed, but she had a phrase in her head that her tongue was her enemy, and she had to do it properly. She decided to think positively. To say a thing is not such a big deal. This is a chance. People inside the palace no longer treat her with disdain. But outside the palace, everyone considers her an immature princess. On the day of the holiday, she thought she was in trouble because there were much more people than she expected. Nazar tried to cheer her up, but she was called on stage. It was time to change her reputation for the better and show the true face of the heir apparent. Unfortunately, her loudspeaker broke and no one could hear her. She was very scared because she was afraid to spoil everything. The emperor took her in his arms and brought her to his loudspeaker. In her head, she was scrolling that she was not a child and was afraid of what people would think. She realized that it was a habit for him to pick her up. The girl began to perform, and people realized that her behavior did not correspond to the rumors. Everyone was surprised that the rumors about the heiress were just a fiction. The emperor wanted to spend the day with the girl. At dinner, Philomel asked about the performance. Her husband liked it, so she decided to ask for a recognition ring as a reward. But he said it was too early, also adding that it did not mean that he categorically refused. But she was rushing things, because the ring puts a lot of stress on the wearer's body if he is young. So she will be able to use it when she grows up. It scared the girl, because when she grows up, Alencia will appear. The emperor wondered why she wanted him so much to which the girl replied that the ring symbolized the right of the heir to the throne. The man promised that he would give her a ring, but a little later, and allowed her to choose anything other than a ring. But she didn't need anything else. She had done so much to gain his trust, but at one point, she was so cut down. She couldn't look into his eyes. Without the ring, she will not be able to fulfill her plans. She had put in so much effort, but if she didn't get the ring by then, she would have no choice but to completely change her plan. Her thoughts were interrupted by Mrs. Dellis, who said that His Majesty wanted to see her, and he said he would send her valuable elite tea leaves as a gift. She said to tell him that she was not feeling well, but in that case, the Emperor would come to her himself. The girl wondered why so suddenly, but the conversation was so important. What the hell is going on? The girl asked Mrs. Dellis if His Majesty would still like to come to tell him that she was sleeping, because she did not want to see him now. Suddenly she heard someone coming. She thought it was the Countess, and it was useless to persuade her she would not budge. But she was wrong. It was the Emperor, but she didn't even want to look at him. The man did not understand why she wanted the ring so badly. She was his opponent even without it, but if she wanted it so badly, he would give it to her in three years, when she was fifteen. The girl did not believe it and asked if it was true. He said yes, especially since by then it would not put a lot of strain on her body, but asked her to try to use it less often. She was so happy that she jumped on the emperor and hugged him tightly. Philomel realized that in three years, Alencia was not yet due to appear, so her plan was still in place. She has three whole years. Countess Dellis came for the girl because she had only a few hours before her debut. She thought that her outfit would be too pretentious. However, the lady noticed that she always dresses neatly and makes her debut a little earlier than other girls. But even now she looks like a well-mannered lady. That's right, she usually acts like she's 16. But the Marquise Elos, who is in charge of social circles, has disappeared. So someone has to take her place. The other girls who attended the celebration complimented Nazar that he was handsome, modest, and that Her Majesty had nothing to worry about when she had such a perfect groom by her side. There was an old custom that the first dance partner on the day of the debut should be married. The Emperor told his daughter that this was a myth and that she should not dwell on it. Everyone was amazed by the beauty and elegance of Her Majesty, and Nazar grew up to be a wonderful young man. Philomel approached Nazar and asked him to dance. She could feel the warmth of his hands, even through his gloves, and she had to raise her head to meet his eyes. He was no longer a little boy. The girl thought she could be Alencia's replacement as long as she wanted before she left this place. After her festive debut, she had perhaps her busiest days ever, along with the already existing classes in the schedule. 
She was also responsible for gathering information, such as news in the secular community, diplomatic rumors, and the political situation, and then reporting everything to the emperor. And in the year she turned 15, his majesty, as promised, gave her a confession ring. The man said that since the girl did not have sacred powers, he endowed the ring with his own. Only she must use it with caution, as she promised. She was and will be his only heir. That day, she finally put on her finger what she needed, but could not at the same time carry out the entire escape plan. She did not know where Alencia was. The book only said that Alencia came to Lake Jutina from time to time, which meant that she was somewhere not far from this place. But there are so many villages in the counties. If we leave everything as it is, it will turn out that Alencia is a real princess. But when she leaves the palace now, his majesty will most likely start looking for her, but whatever she chooses, Catherine, her biological mother, will still die. She needed to put aside her sad thoughts. Now she needs to do what she can. She is doing this only for herself, not for anyone else, and this is not selfishness. Some time later, a social celebration. The girls thanked for the saved lives of their relatives. Nazar could not take his eyes off her all evening, and even Kenny noticed he was very jealous of the girl, but did not tell others. The emperor took the girl away from the party. She said that she did not learn any new information today, but she told him that Mrs. Lusan said that the Countess's condition improved after she drank medicine from the elite. It seems that an epidemic has begun in the South. Shouldn't they provide medicine to that part of the country? The man said that tomorrow he would give orders to the interested parties. Moreover, the Marquis of Land recently had a daughter. And there are rumors that Count Varsa will soon become related to a foreign ambassador. The man thanked the girl for her work. The role she has to fulfill as part of the secular community, she is already used to it. Is it enough to get recognition? It's even for the best. She was wondering how to start a conversation about it. The man remembered that her birthday was coming up and asked her what she wanted as a present. But she said that the ring he gave her last year was enough. If she refuses once out of politeness, as she has done every time, instead of a gift, she wants him to fulfill her request in a temporary palace, which is located in Justina. The man decided to give it to her, but the girl just wanted to spend the spring days with him there, because when she was there, she could not take her eyes off the incredible scenery. She hoped that he would agree, because then she would finally be able to find his real daughter. He said it was not difficult, and he would go without any problems. She remembered that this day was also considered the day of the Empress's death, so she was afraid that it would be difficult for him to leave the palace. He said he would resolve political negotiations in the temporary palace and told the ambassadors to come there. He said that they would do so. Philomel did not understand why he stood his ground, but there was nothing to be done about it. Perhaps more people would be appropriate. But the fact that she managed to persuade His Majesty to go to that place can already be called a small victory. She did a lot to make people hate her, and Philomel in the book, in turn, only spent money without thinking about anything. To live like a dead mouse, to be ignored, as if it does not exist at all. The day she first heard these words, she decided that she would live the way her father wanted her to. She hid in a corner of the imperial palace, hoping that people would easily erase her from their memory. She had no choice but to start working on her escape plan. But then she could not have imagined that she would live so hard. All this time, she had been behaving so conscientiously and decently. Could he really kill her? A disguised prophecy. A little bit of jewelry she had saved, a little bit of gold coins. Upon arrival in Utica, during the time when the emperor will negotiate, she will bring the girl and return the place that belongs to her. That's when her role as crown princess will end. When she looks at the ring, she immediately has the urge to run away, but she suppresses it to save her and her mother's lives. She has many reasons for this, but after reading the prophecy, she learned something else and she realized that all people have their own history, which they hide so much. His Majesty, who did not hear a soul in the Empress, and Alencia, who, in her opinion, lived happily in her place. However, her childhood was almost the same as Philomel's. Perhaps if the girl had revealed the truth, these two would have been able to be happy a little earlier. 
The wounds on their hearts have turned into scars that will not disappear just like that, but she feels that she will not be able to leave with a light heart, ignoring all those years of pretending that she does not know the truth. So she will return her father's own daughter to him. On the eve of her birthday, Utina, the girl was walking along the shore of the lake. Nazar followed her and invited her to tea, but she refused because she had recently been at a tea party with His Majesty and asked him to find another interlocutor, surprised that wherever he went, everyone knew him. The expression on Nazar's face is most likely that he feels remorse for not being able to fulfill his role as a groom, but he could not worry. He will be the perfect partner for the princess when Alencia appears. The emperor invited the girl to his place. She was surprised because she had already had dinner and dessert, and here was a whole cake. If everything was as usual, he would have already talked about work, why he only looked at her silently. It was a difficult atmosphere for the girl. The man gave her a gift, a model of a ship, and now she understood what he was waiting for. He said that this is a miniature. The real one is still in the process of being made. It will take more time to build it than he expected. It was the first time His Majesty had given her anything other than what she wanted, and that he had given it on her birthday, when she learned that the birthday she thought was hers was actually Alencia's, and she had been born a day earlier. She thought that there was nothing wrong with him being hers. His Majesty could never figure it out. It is a wonderful feeling to be congratulated, but the birthday of his real daughter is tomorrow. The next day, near Lake Utina, the banquet in honor of her birthday would be held only after negotiations. The Countess was worried about whether she would be okay without rest. The woman saw how much the girl liked watching the people and said that she would be a great empress in the future. However, by that time, she will not be here. The Countess came to the girl and said that they had found the place she was looking for, but Martin added that they could not drive to it. They would have to walk, but in order not to be overwhelmed, he could call the residents to the palace. He was sent to protect her. She tried different methods to stop the Emperor from replacing him with another knight. It was obvious that he would be the easiest to escape with. She really hates him. A girl approached them, and an image immediately popped into Philomel's head that she had read many times. Blue eyes, cheeks like two peaches, fair skin, a girl standing in front of her like two drops of water, similar to Empress Isabella. She found her. It was Alencia. The girl asked to see her house. The girl was embarrassed, but said if the princess wanted to, she would be happy to show it to her. They came to her house, and the girl introduced Philomel to her mother. The woman was so frightened that she dropped the plate and asked the girl to leave, because she did not want to be a kind of entertainment for noble people. Philomel wanted to talk to her in private, a woman who could not become empress herself, and switched places with Alencia, and unable to accept what she had done. She took out her resentment on Alencia. But in the end, this woman opened the door of her heart to a child whose kindness knew no bounds. If she had waited another year, she would have confessed to everything herself and then would have died at the hands of the emperor, knowing full well how this situation would turn out for the girl when the truth was revealed. It's so heartless. Philomel said that she was going to take her daughter to the emperor. Her goal was to reunite the daughter and father who lived without knowing each other's existence. But the woman said that Alencia was still her daughter, even though she did not give birth to her. Alencia will decide for herself whether to have it or not after she learns the truth. So sweet Alencia was loved, even by her non-blood parents in comparison. The girl asked her mother how she lived all these years, and she replied that of course she lived luxuriously in the imperial palace. Since her mother was not interested in her life, she was not interested in her either. Philomel only warned her mother that if she wanted to live, she needed to run away from this place. When the truth came out, the woman knew better than anyone else that they were both in danger. Philomel took Alencia. They met. The girl was surprised that they were both named after flowers. And if you think about it, her name is the same as the princess. In a moment she learned that she was a princess. The countess was in a state of thought. Ever since she saw this child, 
She could not get it out of her mind that she was a copy of the dead empress. But how is this possible? Philomel thought that the girl was worried because she took her away without saying a word. But now that she was silent, she had the impression that she was looking at a completely different person. As soon as His Majesty sees Alencia, he will immediately realize that she is his daughter. Philomel brought the girl to the palace. The emperor was still in negotiations, but the girl insisted on being called. She introduced the girl to the emperor and said that she had met her by chance. And since she looked so much like her dead mother, she thought she was a relative of hers, so she invited her here. The audience realized that it would be difficult to continue the negotiations, so they were postponed. The princess felt a little sorry for Alencia, who did not understand anything, but everything would be fine. After all, the emperor will only need one look to realize that she is his real daughter. The girl was ready that the only thing left for her was to leave without regrets. The girl walked past Mrs. Dellis, realizing how much she would be surprised to see her missing. The girl mentally thanked Mrs. Dellis for what she had done for her, and perhaps she would not be able to forget her. She looked at the emperor's gift and wondered if it had been the same as it was before. Would it have changed anything? As she had hoped, all the servants were waiting outside. Now that everyone was surprised by the situation with Alencia, she had a chance to leave unnoticed. But Nazar noticed her. She realized that if she returned, all her plans would collapse. But at the same time, she understood that it would be even more suspicious if she pretended not to hear. She walked and remembered Countess Delis and Poland, the Emperor, Nazar. She ran far from the palace, hoping that at this distance, her father would not feel that she had used the ring. He had given it powers last year. She needed to focus well on the place she wanted to be, because her body could suffer from the interference of outside thoughts. Elencia met the emperor, told him that she did not know her father, and told him about her mother. Poland said that the empress had no relatives with that name. The girl took the opportunity to ask if he was her father by any chance. After all, her mother told her that her father was an incredible man, with dark hair, like darkness, and blue eyes, just like hers, so she thought he was her father. The man felt his power being used. At that time, the countess ran into the hall and said that the princess had disappeared for reasons unknown to anyone. She left a letter. Poland said that if she used the powers and disappeared, it would be difficult to find her. It might be necessary to search the entire continent. The emperor was reading the letter at the time. In it, the girl told him that Alencia was his own daughter, that she had met the girl's mother, who was the empress's maid, and that the woman told him the truth about the switch out of jealousy, that she was his fake daughter, and that she was leaving this place because she couldn't look him in the eye and thanked him for his upbringing. The emperor was angry. He told to gather the whole army and find his daughter. The girl found herself in the northern part of the empire. Walking down the street, she realized that she was being addressed, but it could not be, because the power of the ring should hide her existence. Even if she was seen, her image would still be a little blurry. Then she realized that she was not being addressed. She didn't have time. She didn't know how long the search would take, and whether the power in the ring was infinite. In addition, she could only teleport to places she had been before, and she needed to find a way to get to the Angelium, where the Tower of Mages, with her father Lakin, was located. A week after the disappearance of the fake princess, three days ago, the Imperial Palace officially announced the disappearance of the princess to the whole country. Her portraits were everywhere, a generous reward for whoever found her. Nazar also wanted to find her, and make sure of the information of eyewitnesses, but she was nowhere to be found. Everyone asked Poland about the situation in the palace. He remembered only the emperor's order to search for the princess, but why the rumors were false, and they spread with such incredible speed that it was impossible to muffle them. Poland went into the room to the emperor. He was in a very bad condition, saying that he had used too many sacred powers. With their help, he wanted to cover more territory to find her but he never found her. Since the death of the Empress, he sees His Majesty in such a state for the first time. 
and he can't imagine that such an emperor would find a princess and then punish her as a criminal. Nazar wanted to go to Senshin because the owner of the ring could only get to the places she had been before, so it was likely that the princess was there. The nanny brought Alencia to the emperor and said that she was definitely the daughter of the empress. The man looked at the woman and did not understand. She had resigned when Philomel was nine, had taken care of her since birth, and accepted it so quickly. And he still could not believe that his daughter was not like that. Catherine Hounds was caught at the border and brought to the palace. He asked if it was true that she had switched her daughter with his, for which he struck the woman with a sword. Alencia was taken away, because knowing the emperor's hot temper, her adoptive mother could die right then and there, in which case it would not happen in front of the girl. He realized how much Philomel looked like her, but he didn't understand why he hadn't noticed it before. He threw the sword out of her hands and ordered her to be sent to prison. The nanny asked to prepare her room, and she in turn will take care of the new princess. Poland immediately realized that she decided to stay here, using the princess. The man agreed, but only until he finds a new maid. Elencia was worried that the emperor was not happy to find her. Poland tried to calm her down, saying that he needed time to accept it. They had made sure that she had sacred powers, so she was definitely the emperor's daughter. Philomel dyed her hair just in case. The magic was still working, and she couldn't calm down. Wherever she went, there was always talk. She found the wizard tower and was stunned by its size. It looked more like a castle than a tower. She was worried whether her father would agree to meet her, because she had heard that even aristocrats of high birth had difficulty meeting the lord of the Tower of Mages. A man said that if she kept standing like that, she would not get into the tower, and the next meeting was next week. She could not let this happen, because she did not know when they would find out that she was here, and if they added escape to the mix, she would be caught immediately, and possibly even sentenced to death. The man said that he knew some magicians, and he could guide her, but she had to give him something in return. She got some coins, but the man stole them and tried to escape. He was tripped and fell. They had a verbal altercation. The girl was shocked that a man from the Tower of Mages helped her. Another man was standing behind her. She did not understand how everything turned out this way. They returned the coins to her. The white-haired guy took her to the discipline department and handed everything over to Lexian. Most of all, she was angry that he was right, because she was really deceived. The guy asked what brought her here. She said that she had to meet Lakin, not knowing whether he would believe her or not, but that she should try, that she was his daughter, that she looked like she was crazy. But if you think about it, she only came here because she trusted the prophecy. He took her to the tower. The girl asked why he was not surprised that she was his daughter. But the guy said he was more surprised that she came so late. She did not understand what he meant. Lexian said they were almost there. But before entering, she had to take off the ring. Because Lequin doesn't like sacred powers. The boyfriend told her not to take Lequin's words to heart. She realized that her own father was behind the door. Her father looked very much like the man who helped her. But it was not him. The girl and her father were not alike, except for the same eye color. The man took her hand to check for strength. He said that she had very little mana, like an empty shell, and very little strength. She was really his daughter. The girl wondered if this was how she had imagined her first meeting with her own father, treating his daughter, whom he saw for the first time today, as a stranger. And she had a lot of questions for him. He answered them, but she realized that he was not answering what he was thinking. Once upon a time, there was a child. He had no family, but he possessed a great power that no one else had, a power with which he could change the weather or kill the dragon Estelion with a single movement of his hand. But the price for this gift is not its only drawback. He could not understand ordinary human feelings and was absolutely indifferent to everything except for those things to which he felt interest. And once he decided to conduct an experiment, he collected a large amount of money and women volunteers. This experiment was to create an artificial baby by combining human and Estelian tissue. The man said that he wanted a child who would inherit his strength, but it was not easy. 
Those born had only the ability to use magic, and there was no Estellian at all. One day he stopped the experiment, and having stopped aging, he decided to live forever. But even stepping on the road of eternal loneliness, he did not hesitate for a minute. He did not understand why she came. She had little mana. She could not become a magician. Did she come for money? He decided to add the amount that her mother had not taken, so she would not be disappointed. The girl apologized for coming here and said she didn't need anything, turned around and left. She was walking down the corridor and thought that everything was fine. She would just go abroad. It was stupid of her to expect anything. How could she think that he felt attached to her? Lixian asked her to wait. He said he would walk her to the exit, but she should listen to him on the way. She apologized for snapping at him because he had nothing to do with it, but he told her that he was her half-brother. And besides him, she had two other brothers. He told her about the experiment, and that it was the first time he had a child like her, and that he was more of a teacher than a father to the boys. So Le Quen did not expect her to be so upset. The girl believed that for him, she was nothing more than a mistake. A child who did not even have magical powers, born without love, and the Tower of Mages, was not the place where she belonged. Lixian wanted to study her. Why, unlike them, who feel emotions only halfway, she is a normal person, because they were all born in the same experiment. He said that he would teach her magic, and she would be his assistant, while he would study her. He also added that if she wants to hide her identity, the Mage Tower is perfect, because it is a place where the Emperor would not dare to enter. The Lord said that nothing mattered anymore. She ran out of here saying that she hated him, but he wondered how a child, who had not even reached the age of majority, would live in such a cruel world. The girl puzzled over how this could be connected. Perhaps accepting Lexion's offer would be the best option, but in this case, she would have to live, constantly meeting face to face with a man who was her father only on the surface. She looked at the ring and realized that the light was weakening meaning that the sacred powers were slowly running out, and she needed to find a replacement first. She wondered when the emperor would stop looking for her. He must be enjoying life now, because in the book, he was affectionate with his daughter, as if he were a completely different person. Unlike her, who could not get a draw, not even her own parents, love, Elencia. The girl came to a shop with magical items. A lady noticed her and the ring. She ordered her to keep it, and took the ring away, saying that she had stolen it and would find her a master who would be more suitable for this role. After taking it off, she recognized Princess Philomel and ordered to call the security people. The girl said that the woman recognized why she was hit in the face and said that she would like to kill her right there, but she would have to be patient. Nazar and his group had been searching for her for several days when they heard the sounds of a carriage. The woman recognized him but did not think of anything to say to him. He was the best candidate for the role of husband in the empire. If you think about it, he is the fiancé of a fake princess, and now their wedding is already trampled. Maybe this is her chance to be remembered by him. She greeted him and said she had news he would be happy to hear, and told him that she had found a fake princess in Angelium. He went to the place where she was being held. The girl was behind bars and realized how stupid she was. She had to hide or cover the ring. If she was taken out, she would die sooner or later. Would her life end so miserably? The girl decided to resort to trickery and introduced herself as Charlotte Tate, and she had an identical appearance to the princess. And if they did not believe, let them write a letter to the Tower of Wizards, Mr. Laxian. She is his younger sister. Lexian would immediately know what was going on, and she could only hope that he would confirm her words. But a person who knew the fake princess arrived at the prison, and she realized that everything was gone, and if she had a little time, she would get out of this place. Le Quinn woke Lexan up in the middle of the night and said that if he knew where Philomel was, he would tell her that she should immediately return to the magic tower, that he needed to meet her again. The guy thought it would take a few days, but not even a day has passed, so soon he will need to prepare to meet his new family. Nazar was very worried about her, but he was the person she wanted to hear and see the least. He released her and asked her to return to the palace with him. Philomel did not understand why he made a face as if he was really worried about her. 
She was worried that she had left Princess Alencia in the palace, but if she said they had to leave, someone would certainly find out about her detention, so she had to give up the book first. She didn't know what to do in this situation. She couldn't tell anyone about the book, and it would be difficult to escape again. So she went to Nazar and asked him to pretend that he hadn't seen her today, because if she returned to the palace, she would die. Nazar did not understand who could do her harm. He believed that the fake daughter was just a rumor. The girl asked him very much to let her go, even said that she would do everything for him if he fulfilled her request. Maybe he would agree. By nature, he is a straightforward and honest person. During all this time, he adhered to personal boundaries, which he himself set in their relationship. He said that he could not fulfill her request because he had ordered to send a magical carrier pigeon to the Imperial Palace before he even got into the carriage. But he said that he really wanted to help her and offered to stay at the country house of Averdin, located in Angelium, and tell His Majesty that she had escaped. The girl was afraid that in the eyes of His Majesty, the boy would look like a fool, but he didn't care, let him treat him like a fool as much as he wanted. He wanted to say why he was doing this for her, but he was afraid. Philomel said that since she did not want to inconvenience him, she refused his offer. She understood that he had most likely already met Alencia, since they would be a couple. He would not regret his relationship with her, but why did his eyes reflect sadness? Nazar thought that she was drawing a line between them, but the closer he got to her, the more she moved away. But still, he thought that if he managed to defend his place, he would be able to stand next to her some day, and she probably wouldn't understand. All they had built during this time was a relationship justified only by a conventional engagement. But all he said out loud was that he realized too late that he had been so stupid. She was awake and heard what he was saying, but did not understand why he was saying it. She decided to stay in a hotel. She knew that if she stayed here for a while, maybe the number of people who would recognize her would increase, but she was so hungry. He told the kitchen what dishes to prepare, and she realized that he knew she liked that kind of food. She asked him for money out of great shame, but he didn't have any on him. But she also didn't want to ask her ex-fiancé for it. But to contact the Magic Tower, she needed some means of communication. While they were chatting, the Emperor arrived. He appeared suddenly, without a guard, the Emperor himself. He turned to her, asking where she was. Did she know how long he had been looking for her? The girl was very scared. She thought it was the end, and she would die. The man asked what was wrong with her, and why she was so pale. She realized that now she really had nowhere to go. Strangely, she heard nothing at all and fainted. The emperor used his power and disappeared with the girl. Nazar was very worried, and ordered to find a magician who could use spatial magic. They went to the Tower of Mages. Lord and Lexian realized that she had disappeared. The boy blamed his father, but he said that he did not think she would react like that because everyone wants money from him, and since it was his child, he thought she was the same. Cardin, the middle son, and Jeremiah, the younger son, returned to the tower. The older one was shocked that their sister had been found, but the younger one did not care. The Lord wanted to steal it, but this would manifest a war between a tower that did not belong to the Empire and the Empire itself. The man said that outwardly they were in good relations, so it would be difficult. But the younger one said that as far as he remembers, almost all requests for cooperation were rejected. The Lord decided to go personally to check on her, and emphasized that if the boys stopped him, he would not listen to them. Lexion said that they do not stop him, because he is the only one who can get into the palace unnoticed, and they will get there by another method. In any case, he is not allowed to show himself and not to make trouble until they arrive. The emperor was furious because she looked like she was going to die, and they did nothing. The emperor seemed to be too worried, saying that the princess was dying. The doctor arrived and said that this condition was due to lack of sleep and fatigue and stress. He said she needed time to recover. The doctor said that perhaps before losing consciousness, she saw something that shocked her. The emperor decided to stay by her side. The emperor's body was not in the best condition, 
but as long as it was about the princess, he would be stubborn. She regained consciousness, not realizing what time it was, and she could smell fresh wood, the smell of the emperor. She realized how quickly she came back here. She had been preparing to escape for seven years, but it seems that her fate cannot be changed. He woke up and asked why she had left, and asked if anything bad had happened to her. About that letter, she does not need to leave this place, even if they are not related by blood. She is his daughter, and he will enter her in the family register. She was shocked and asked him if he was going to kill her. He was stunned. She was not searched for to punish her, and Alencia was replaced by her mother, not by herself. The girl wondered if she was really that important to him. She didn't know if she needed it. She wanted to accept the offer because it would help her avoid death. But she realized that if his interest disappeared, she would leave this place again. But she refused, saying she didn't want to be his daughter. They brought her food. She realized that the human mind is so unprincipled, even in a place where she did not want to return. She was easily bribed with food. She didn't know what to do now, after the words she had said to His Majesty whether she should return the ring, or whether she should tell him what had happened. At this time, Elencia came into the room. She was happy to see her mistress back. The girl did not feel comfortable, perhaps because the situation was the opposite of the one in which they met. Elencia offered her to play a game, and she learned that the nanny had returned to the palace, which was another reason to leave the palace. Elencia offered the girl to become her maid, because she had nowhere to go and she could live with her. She thought that the offer of an entry in the family registry was enough to change her fate, but she was wrong. The becoming of Alencia's maid is the original plot of the prophecy. She didn't want to become her daughter. Since she grew up, she never thought of him as a father. Maybe he considered her a father, but life here seemed like hell to her. He said it would be better if she lived as if she didn't exist, so she tried to live as he said and now she wants him to stop trying to find her. The man was shocked that she heard it. Now he realized what had been in her heart all along. He wanted to say something, but realized that whatever he said now would look like an excuse. He said that he would officially apologize later and wanted her to think about the family registry, but she refused right away, and he asked her to stay here for another year before she left, and after that, wherever she went, he would not keep her. He said that whatever she did, she would do. He will help her in everything. And if a year does not suit her, then at least ten months, then eight, then six. And he said that he could not give up any more. She was trying to say something all this time. He shortened the date to three months. He realized that she would run away. It was obvious. For three months, he was in such a hurry to find her. But for her, he was, he is in the office. Alencia ran into the room and began to ask her father to let her become Flamel's servant. He realized that Alencia wanted to make the girl a servant, even without her consent, regardless of how she grew up before. Now she was a princess, and to come with such absurd requests, she was glad that His Majesty did not listen to everything she said. Only she wanted to say something about yesterday's proposal. He immediately said that her room was prepared. She could stay there if it would be more convenient, and he had to go. She did not have time to say anything to him. The countess hugged the girl very tightly and told her how worried she was. Suddenly, they heard a cat meowing outside the window. The woman wanted to check, opened the window, and the cat ran inside. He was incredible, silver, with eyes like a heroine. My mind was in chaos, strangely different from the novel, but still anxious about the future, meeting her real father, and the story of her birth, and Eustace, and Alencia. She did not know how to react to her behavior. The countess was next to her, and said that if the girl wanted to talk, she was always ready to listen to her. She asked what was happening between the emperor and the girl, and the countess replied that their relationship was strange, despite the fact that they were related by blood, but had met a few few days ago. The relationship between parents and children is no different from any other. It takes time and effort on both sides. Philomel did not understand anything. In the book, these two immediately established some kind of special relationship, a connection that she did not have. She had always dreamed of him, but he was not between her and Eustace. Both Carton and Lequeen, with whom she shared blood, turned out to be people who were unable to mend this feeling for her. 
as did Eustace. The previous emperor was heartless. He forced his children to fight for power until Isabella came along. Eustace had never felt attached. There was no one to rely on, only anxiety that was about to disappear from under his feet. The countess asked if she had to leave again. How about staying at her house? She asked if the woman would become Alencia's maid, and the woman smiled and replied that she could not replace someone she cared for. The countess asked her if the girl wanted to run again, to tell her at least. She wondered what if there were others she had abandoned beforehand, because she was scared, and she fell asleep. When the silence fell, Lakin could finally turn from a cat into a man. He looked at her and felt as if something was familiar, but he was still not sure what it was, and it made him feel uncomfortable, as it never happened with the boys. He never worried about it, but he knows that most people were afraid of him. It took him some time to understand the actions and facial expressions of others. What was in their eyes was fear. Phil was different. She was not afraid of him. That's what I was thinking of doing last night. The nanny began to shout at Phil. Because of her and her mother, their poor princess lived without knowing her father's face. The countess stood up for the girl. While she thought that this woman had taken care of her all her childhood, and then this, the nanny fell down for no reason and began to blame the girl. She looked at the cat and thought it looked very happy. From the nanny, she learned that Catherine was here, alive in prison. They left. The cat wanted to go with them, but the girl told him to wait quietly for her. They laughed because cats do not understand human language, but he really stayed, and they were shocked that he was extremely smart. Poland asked when the girl had managed to get a cat, but she said that he was being held until they found an owner and it was cold outside. There was a conversation about dismissing the nanny. Alencia advocated that as long as her back was injured, she would not be able to leave the palace for her sake. So it turns out that she is the one who is going to kick the nanny out, not Poland. And if she refuses, she will be a scoundrel for trying to kick out a sick old lady. She doesn't really care about her reputation, since she'll be leaving this place soon anyway. But still, Phil recalled a story when she broke her leg, and every day until her leg healed, she lived hell. So she set a condition that Alencia should come out and help her with everything. And wouldn't she feel better if she had support? Since she does not want to leave the palace, she will have to stay close to Alencia, and the good girl will certainly not refuse. Joining the imperial family was usually done strictly for political purposes. In cases where there was no direct heir to the throne, the siblings from the sidelines were accepted in his place. In such cases, when it was necessary to conclude an alliance with another state, and there were no children suitable for this, Arranged marriages were made with children of the upper nobility, even for an aristocrat, and even more so for her, who was practically a nobody. Joining the imperial family was not an easy task. However, the girl did not understand the stubbornness of this degree. It was too much. She had a request for Polan. She wanted to meet her mother, Katrin. The woman was in prison and realized that she was going to die soon, because there was no chance that His Majesty would pardon her. She understood that it was meant to be. It seemed to be karma for everything she had done before. Twenty-nine years ago, it was a small village not far from Mount Palace. Catherine and Isabella were eight years old when they met. From their first meeting, Isabella was a special child. Despite the difference in status with her, the daughter of a traitor, perhaps they were able to become friends only because of her. However, from the moment the newly crowned emperor arrived at the estate without Isabella, their relationship, which she thought would go hand in hand, slowly began to fall apart at the seams. She knew she was not right for him and that the two would be together. The emperor was not at all like the man rumored to be a cold-blooded and ruthless and bloody tyrant. Isabella offered the girl to go with her to the palace. Her brother is as usual. She is a pain in the ass to him. He was glad she was finally leaving. Her father, a salesman to the core who put profit first, and her brother, who was afraid of losing what was his, against this background, she had nothing to regret, because she would be much happier with her only friend. However, this happiness did not last long. Undoubtedly, thanks to the soft-hearted and kind Isabella, life in the palace was comfortable, 
so much so that she received more than the maid deserved. Of course, the emperor granted her such conditions only as a friend of the empress, but she forgot that it was only a formal care and courtesy, and, fascinated by that comfort, became greedy for what she should not have looked at. She did not want to take Isabella's place. She just wanted to get at least a little bit of love, and if she was on the same level as the people she loved, she offered the emperor to become his mistress. And of course, the result was that the stupid woman betrayed her friend, and now she was receiving anger and scorn from her beloved. She did not know what to do now, or if it was possible to fix it somehow. She had nowhere to return to, except her family. But if she returns like this, her father and brother will have a lot of questions, and they will be very angry. She left the palace, and on the way she was attacked by wolves. But she was protected by a boy who killed them with his magic. The girl was scared and did not understand what was happening. That's how she met the Lord. He said he had an offer for her. He was looking for women to bear his children. The day she returned home, her family members poured out all their disappointment and condemnation on her. Shame and compassion filled her heart. Even if she was absolutely worthless, if she had a child by the world's greatest magician, would she also become a worthy human being? She agreed. So she was imprisoned in the Tower of Wizards until the results were obtained and was forbidden to talk about the experiment. She is weak because instead of becoming the most famous person, she wanted to get pleasure through a child. But the fact that the child will be famous did not mean that she will be the same. In addition to this, her father found out that she was carrying a child from someone else. He left her in anger and went to the capital. From that day on, she no longer existed for the Hound's family. The day of her birth was approaching, and Isabella came to her, who was also about to give birth. Looking at Isabella, the girl felt like a total nobody. She was the first to give birth. Isabella came to congratulate her and suddenly collapsed from sudden contractions. In such an unexpected situation, Catherine offered the Empress her bed, and fortunately the child was born healthy. But all the famous doctors and magicians could not make Isabella open her eyes. And at the moment when her only friend took her last breath, she was faced with two newborn babies with the same hair color. Some more time passed. She left her homeland and moved to a quiet village. The money she received for the experiment allowed her to buy a house and live somehow. Occasionally, she received news from the capital. She learned the news that the emperor had gone mad because of the news of his wife's death and ordered the execution of all those who could not save her and that the princess, who now received the emperor's love instead of Isabella, was named Philomel. Elencia grew up as a sweet and very kind child. She was very obedient. But the problem was that she looked more and more like Isabella. The older she was, the more she felt guilty. And every day she suffered from nightmares, hallucinations, and insomnia. At the moments when Carton was angry with the girl and shouted that she did not want to see her face, the girl said that even if her mother hated her, she would still clean up because she did not want the woman to get hurt and she would try even harder for her. At that moment, she realized that this child was not Isabella. She was just a child who did not hate people, a sweet child, a child she did not deserve. Immersed in memories, she remembered that day a few months ago. The girl was strange. She did strange and uncharacteristic things. Although what's the point in thinking about it? She's going to die anyway. She also wondered about Philomel what was happening to the child she had thought was living happily all along. She saw someone coming and thought it was Alencia, but it was Philomel, who immediately apologized for the wrong person. She came to see if something had changed, because her actions had accelerated the development of events, and until the very end, the woman did not consider her her daughter. The woman apologized for thinking that Alencia was coming to her. She just thought that there was no one else here who wanted to see her. Perhaps the only reason Catherine was still alive was because of Alencia's request. The girl emphasized to spend the woman's last time with benefit and left, the one who gave birth to her but could not become her mother. The woman asked her to stay, but the girl did not understand what they wanted from her. She angrily told her how Alencia lived, and suddenly she wondered why the girl had never come here, and she didn't look like she was worried about her mother's life. 
The woman said that was not what she wanted to know. She told me that her daughter had completely changed, like a different person, then apologized and thanked me for visiting her. She did not know whether to believe Catherine's words, because everyone knew that the girl was good, and suddenly she realized that why she thought that Alencia should be good, why she believed only what was written in the book, because there were many suspicious moments, unlike what is commonly considered a prophecy. It existed in the form of a novel in Alencia's hand, and the fact that it was thrown away in the garden, as if for someone to find, was a sign that she could only rely on it without question. But what was written there was not a lie, that she was not the emperor's daughter, and that she was born as a result of an experiment by the Tower of Magicians was true. But if the prophecy was not true, although she will be closely monitored if she stays here for another three months, justice should not let her go for long. Suddenly, she became dizzy and was caught by Le Quen. Meanwhile, the boys arrived at the palace. They accompanied Nazar. The guy thought he was lucky. Immediately upon arrival at the Tower of Mages, he met those who had the magic of movement, and although thanks to them he got here faster, he did not know if she was okay. Philomel was shocked, because she did not know how the Lord got here, because with the power of movement, it was impossible for the palace. He said that everything was possible for him and that he had been by her side since last night, and she didn't understand how it was possible. He said that he was ordered to wait patiently there, and although he was bored, he sat there quietly and pointed to the place where the cat was. She couldn't believe it, because she had given that pillow to a silver cat, but in a moment she realized that it was a silver cat. The girl said it was a lie, but the man showed her how he was transforming. She was angry and tried to kick him out, because he had deceived her. She even thought about taking care of him if no owner was found, and I started throwing things at him. Although it was useless, they didn't hit him. After calming down a bit, the man asked her what she didn't like about cats, and she said she loved them when they were real. Common sense told her that his standard ones were even stranger, shamelessly cheeky, and where was it seen that the Lord of the Tower of Mages, someone would pretend to be a cat, meow and stroke to be petted, but she was glad she had learned about it before she made any mistakes. However, it was Lexian who said she would like the cat. She asked why he had come, and the man said he had come to see his daughter and take her away and to return to the Tower of Mages together. She wondered why he changed his mind. The man said that at first she had a feeling that he had to see her again. He thought that when he saw her, he would understand what was happening, because he had never felt this way about anyone. Now the girl understood Lexian's words that his emotions were incomplete. Even growing up in a normal way, he probably did not look like other parents. Clearly, such a thing as a real family connection was not originally intended for her. It seems that there will be no other way to get out of the palace, and it is necessary to return the Princess Alencia. The girl remembered the words of the Countess, how the Emperor apologized to her, even what Poland said, that regardless of His Majesty's decision, he would like to continue to serve her. He said that he had watched her life and understood how difficult it was for her to live here. So he asked her if she wanted to take revenge on them. The girl asked if he had a lot of work to do in the Tower of Mages, and if she would be okay. He said that he never did anything with his own hands, but only gave out orders. A visitor came to the girl's house. She told her father to immediately turn into a cat. Nazar came to her. He was happy that the girl was okay, because he thought something really happened to her. Of course, she understood his anxiety because she herself thought that something would happen to her as soon as she entered the palace, hence the idea. He looked at her with such excitement that she was not even comfortable. He told her that on the way to the palace, he met a group of magicians who were also heading to the palace and moved with them. She was embarrassed that she was no longer a princess, which meant that she was no longer Nazar's bride. Previously, she would have started on topics that are common in social circles, but now she has to be herself. All her life her goal was to become a princess, whose weaknesses were impossible to detect, and whose main task was to escape in time. The weak and vulnerable real me was hiding behind a mask all this time, and now that she has taken it off, she cannot remember what was under it. Nazar emphasized that he did not know that she had a cat, 
The girl did not understand at first what he was doing, and then saw that he had followed her into the reception area. She didn't want him to follow her life, so she kicked him out. Philomel took a piece of leaf from Nazar's hair and was pleasantly surprised because she thought he was always perfect, but it turned out that he had a side to him. He was not comfortable with himself because he was worried not only about his appearance but also about the fact that he might smell bad, so he left. He was very worried that she would wait for him and not go anywhere, so he asked her again, and she promised that she would not go anywhere. She began to realize that he had come to the palace to understand that she was fine, and he had gone to Angelium to look for her. Elencia asked if Nazar had arrived. Philomel said that he had just left, and they had missed each other, and asked if they had arranged a meeting. Elencia said that she had heard that he was an interesting person, so she wanted to meet him at least once. Philomel realized that they had never met because Princess Alencia was a novel. It had become a habit. Alencia was worried about the girl's relationship with Nazar. She decided to arrange a meeting with him. The girl realized she was humiliated. Until Catherine, perhaps she would have written off the fact that good Alencia was just naive. But now, the girl was walking in the Imperial Garden with a cat and said that there was no one around and he could turn into a person. But he didn't, and she realized that they were not alone. It was Jeremiah, they quarreled, but still the girl demanded an explanation of what was happening. They were like two peas in a pod, but their relationship was terrible. The other two brothers were interviewed, but it was just a formality. The girl was happy because she had always dreamed of a brother or sister, and now her wish came true. And yet she was curious what the four of them were doing here. The boys began to introduce themselves and tell her where they worked and what they did. The girl realized that by entering the garden, these tavers signed their death warrant. They talked about the interview, and the girl realized who the candidates for the palace magicians were, about whom Nazar spoke. They decided to work as mages in the palace to make sure that their sister was okay. Lexian said that he had two reasons for working here. The first was if she wanted to leave this place, it would be easier with them, and the second was if she decided to stay here to see her more often. Lection brought her a book. She thanked them. For some reason, the girl found it funny that Jeremiah had hit Carden, but she began to think that the tension that had built up over the years was beginning to disappear. They asked her once she had her things, if she was ready to go to the tower, and what she really wanted. But right now, her face looked like a child in front of a homework assignment that she didn't want to do. They did not want to take her against her will. They told her she needed to think about what she wanted to do in the future, not what she should, but what she wants. For a long time, all she did was throw herself away in an attempt to avoid death, and the reason for this life was that book. Those seven years that she lived, the dependence on the book, perhaps they hold her back to this day. The reason she could not say that the prophecy was not true is that if seven years of her efforts were thrown away and all her fears were in vain, perhaps the decision not to open her heart to people was a mistake. But she didn't want to run anymore. She wanted to know the truth, what this book was, and why it had come into her hands. She wanted to know the hidden secret. Maybe the words she had said to Nazar a long time ago were actually words she wanted to say to herself. They thanked her for opening up. Le Queen realized that in order to fulfill her plans, she had to stay here, so he decided to stay with her. Of course, his presence would help her a lot, because in case of emergency, she could escape. Everyone stayed with her, except Jeremiah, who expressed his desire to return. But before he left, the girl decided to ask him, because as soon as she heard his name, she wondered if his nickname was the Ice Prince. But she didn't know that he hated being called that. If this is indeed Jeremiah from Princess Alencia, he could be dangerous to her. A magician named Jeremiah, a user of ice magic, a minor character in the book who is passionately in love with the heroine, left the magic tower and walked around the universe, protected the princess from wolves, and this is how their first meeting took place. In gratitude, Alencia arranged for him a tour of the market. Everything he did with her together, 
who had always been lonely, was a novelty, and that day he felt joy for the first time in his life. Gradually opening up, in one day, he told his story. She consoled him, and after these words, Jeremiah fell in love with her. Then Elencia switched back to Nazar, and he, having become a court magician, remained as a noble knight, secretly protecting his beloved. Although she had moved the events forward by about a year, and perhaps the two had not yet met, she did not know that such an important character would turn out to be her brother, whether she could let him go like that, and what if he met her right now and fell in love. She wanted to ask him to stay, but knowing his character, he would not have agreed. So she decided to ask Lequin to detain Jeremiah here, tying him up by his husband and moving him to a dark hole in the ground. The girl remembered that magical and sacred powers are opposite to each other. Philomel came to the emperor and said that she had thought enough to stay here for a while, refusing to be entered in the family register. It was difficult to give an exact date, as she would leave as soon as she had resolved her doubts about Alencia and the book. Before answering, the man decided to apologize for his terrible treatment of her. He should not have said those words, and that's not all. During all this time he neglected her, and did not even think to look after her, using his suffering as an excuse. And although it was too late, he wanted to apologize. She may not forgive him, but he wanted her to at least not disappear without warning. After all, she is only sixteen. And although he is not her biological father, she is still under his care. And if she does not want to be around, he will find a place where she will be comfortable. But he hopes that it will be within reach. He was really sorry that he could not find other words than this short phrase. Philomel felt anxious again, realizing that he was apologizing. She knew it would not change anything. The girl thought he was wrong, because they had spent a long time together. And that's why the attachment appeared. This feeling is not love for her daughter at all. From the very beginning, all her actions were aimed at gaining His Majesty's favor. Whether he would forgive her, whether they would return to the times when their relationship was only outwardly pure, or whether he would take revenge for being separated from his daughter because of her own mother. She could not choose, or rather did not want to. She suggested that he forget all joys and grievances and go their separate ways, so she would put an end to their relationship. She also had a request for him, and he said that he would do anything for her. She wanted to live on her own, but she did not know where to start, so she asked him to let her stay in the palace for a little while longer, even if he would allow her to live in the room for the courtiers. He allowed her to, but said that he could not allow her to live with the servants. She ran into her again. It was strange that wherever Philomel went, she always met her, and now she considered it suspicious. She is not yet sure what kind of person Alencia is, but she is sure that she is not happy that she is staying. What was it? Maybe she said that at some point, Princess Alencia seemed to have been replaced. During this time, she noticed many differences. So if Catherine's words were true, it cannot be left like that. Eustace hates Catherine with all his heart, so much so that it's a wonder he let her live. And now his kidnapped daughter will be asking for her release, which is like saying, kill her immediately. The emperor gathered everyone in his office. Poland reported that the nanny was not mobile, so she would not be there, to which he replied that Alencia was responsible for giving her everything, because she had sworn by her second name. So she went to leave the nanny in the palace. The second name is given by the deity to members of the imperial family who possess sacred powers. And when you swear by the second name, you swear not only by the honor of a member of the imperial family, but also by the grace of God. There is so much symbolism around it that she was jealous of the second name when she was young. But of course, since she did not possess sacred powers, the oracle did not appear although she was eventually named the first female monarch in history. And he began his speech. Sixteen years had passed since his wife gave birth to a child and closed her eyes forever. The place where she gave birth was the house of her old friend Catrin, who also had a newborn baby. That day, his baby and Catrin's baby were switched by mistake. From his speech, Philomel realized that His Majesty was really going to save Catherine, as Alencia had asked. 
The girl did not expect this because of Catherine. He lived without knowing his daughter for more than 10 years. I am sure it was not so easy not to tear her to pieces, but His Majesty fulfilled the request and the words he said to Philomel at the end that no one would ask for her mother's transgression, that she would not be killed in vain, sounded as if she also had something to do with Catherine's sins being covered up. She thanked the maids for the work they had done for her. She was going to reduce their duties, and after she moved out, they would not have to serve her. She would do everything herself as much as she could. When she stepped outside the palace, the reality was not what she expected. She was cheated in the market, almost robbed did not know how to find safe housing, and does not know what could have happened if she had not been helped. After talking to the maids, she thought that life in the palace would be uncomfortable, but it seems that it is not so bad as it was before. Besides, if she had left, she would have broken her promise to Nazar, who is probably back home by now. As a child, he was good at many things. His father was pleased and praised him. He liked his words. He wanted to listen to praise more so he tried even harder. However, the harder he tried, the more he had to do, and his father's expectations only grew. It was around this time that he met her. She seemed shy, quickly became cheerful and friendly to him, and gave him all her love. But for him, spoiled by the sympathy of so many people, the size of her heart, different from others, suddenly seemed a burden. And soon he decided to make an engagement with the princess. He was so immersed in his feelings that he could not look at her. At the time, his feelings for her were confused, sometimes good, sometimes burdensome, and sometimes he envied her for seemingly being free of all responsibility. He was confused and wanted to go against his father, and even tried to push her away. And it came back with a previously unseen anger and dislike for him. For the first time in his life he was punished so much, he was resentful of his disappointed father and mother, who just watched, but he still loved these people and could not hate them completely. He even thought that the reason why it all started was to meet the princess. However, he did not hate her. In fact, the more he learned, the more he regretted it. Compassion, duty, parental expectations, disappointment remained, but the desire to go against the grain decreased over time. The days went by like that until he turned ten and she changed. At first he thought it might be his own fault, but the changes were too striking. There was less and less time for games, and he was getting more and more worried, looking at how mature she seemed, as if she had been replaced and the day came when he could not stand this anxiety. He knelt down in front of the princess. Somehow, the fire in her desperate heart flared up with renewed vigor. Again, time flew by, not as dramatically as it did, but since that day, it has also gradually changed. As a result, he concealed these changes, outwardly remaining the same, solely to be worthy of being around her. He became the perfect successor. But even then, he was not fully aware of his feelings. Duke Averidin wanted to break off the engagement with the fake princess and organize a meeting with Princess Alencia. Nazar was so angry that he said he was now independent and would live as he wanted. Philomel was so tired that she walked around the palace all day. Le Quen asked what it meant that she now lived in the southern palace. And it was great because there was less sacred power here. After moving to the Southern Palace, she decided to study Alencia. She also needed to return the ring, which was probably still with Roseanne, and she would probably appear in the palace as a debutante in some time. She felt guilty for losing the national treasure, but the emperor would probably punish Roseanne severely rather than bring her to justice. 